So we stand. Are we singing Amazing Grace? very much a beautiful start for our mass so in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the lord be with you and you're welcome now today and those of you who are watching us online you're most welcome too as we pray our requiem mass for hannah and as we remember hannah of course we remember our husband dan and all belong to them in eternal life our thoughts of Hannah are happy ones. They're good ones. And she was great age, 93 or 93rd year. And you'd wonder where the time has gone since her 90th birthday and all the excitement. And we, we are glad for her that she's away from the pain and from the suffering you know, that, that old age brought to her. We give thanks for the beautiful way she was looked after in the Khmer nursing home. You know, the, the, with the COVID restrictions and all of that, we, we knew she was okay, even though she, she missed seeing us and we missed seeing her up until very lately. Um, we knew she was okay because they're good and they're kind in the nursing home. So we pray for the nursing home family today, as well as our own family here in Adrigal, who will be missing her and thinking about her. So we just close our eyes for a moment and our good thoughts of Hannah. And we thank God. I, I, could I just mention today also that we have um, Philomena Harrington's funeral later on today at half two in Ross McKeown. So Philomena, 91, the same vintage. And if I could just mention my own dad, John Sheehan of Phylon, um, who died in 2006 on this day, if you don't mind. I just, it's lovely to be doing mass with people 
and that, to be able to mention him. So we pray for them all. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy. So let us pray in our very first prayer now of the Mass. O God, who are mercy for sinners and in the happiness of your saints, we pray for Hannah, for whom we perform the fraternal office of burial today. We ask that she'd have a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of the resurrection, freed from the bonds of this world, she may become before your face. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. So we sit for a moment now and we'll have our readings. Hannah's eulogy. Hannah, our beloved aunt, affectionately known to many as Auntie, was born on the 8th of October 1928 in Darren Carn to John and Mary Harrahan. The youngest of nine children, she grew up in a household which was known widely for card playing, storytelling, and a general meeting place for neighbours and friends. Maybe it was this environment that instilled in Hannah a talent and skill to deliver a story full of interest and suspense. It did not matter how many times you heard the tales of living across the road from the new, now derelict teacher's house or traveling to Whitty Island with her mother. Hannah captured emotions and personal feelings in a way that transcended generations. She always spoke of her early years with fondness despite the harshness of growing up in 1930s Ireland. She was never one to relay events negatively a glass half fun, full person, true and true. Playing and sometimes fighting with her brother Donal, waiting for her older siblings, namely Patsy, Johnny, Timmy, Margaret and Kathleen, to return home from the UK, and of course, receiving letters and the odd gift from abroad, all featured in her reflections of days gone by. She cherished her special bond with her siblings and maintained it not only directly, but with their children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. After completing her primary education at Darren Corrin School, she took up her first job in Bantry, working and living with her uncle Dan and his wife Abigail in Glengariff Road. She often referred to this period in her life as carefree, where her main aim was to attend as many ball nights as possible. That same sense of fun stayed with Hannah throughout her life, no question about it. She loved a party, whether it was baptisms, communions, confirmations, weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, Christmas, Easter, daycare, and even New Year's. You could always rely on Hannah turning up. Like many Irish people, Hannah immigrated to London in the 1940s lodging initially with her brother, Connie. She worked for Sainsbury's for another, a number of years, enjoying, as she put it, as much freedom as you could afford. On the 11th of April, 1953, Hannah married Dan O'Sullivan and set up a home in Turnagrena. There are many translations for Turnagrena in the book, Origins of the Irish Name Places, but those of us who visited and stayed with Hannah and Dan simply translated to Cave Mila Falta. There was always a welcome accompanied by food, drink, chat, galore, and a dog called Lassie. This was a house that welcomed and entertained family, friends, and neighbours from the UK, America, Ireland, and beyond. If you visited once, you were always sure to return. In the late 90s, Hannah's niece Mary and husband Jim built a holiday home on the site of Hannah's old homestead in Derren Corn. Hannah was absolutely ecstatic and was once again able to recreate many more happy memories in Derren Corn. Undoubtedly, Dan's death in 2000 left a void in Hannah's life, but her devout religious belief, together with her interest in life and all it had to offer, spurred her on. She joined her beloved daycare in Castleton Bear and became a strong advocate of all it represented for 18 years. 
her weekly outings to Bantry and beyond with her good friend Sheila Crowley. You really could meet them anywhere along the road. We're invaluable to her independence and, co and quality of her life. Hannah was a loving, kind light in our lives. She never put, failed to put a smile on her face. Her sense of humour, glowing positivity and delicious apple pie will never be forgotten. To conclude, I would like to ask you all to close your eyes and remember one of our favourite moments with Hannah as we remember her especially on this day. Thank you. That was lovely. Was it lovely? <laughs> God, you, you, you gave a great account of her life. Well done. Um, that was lovely to hear. And imagine she got married the year after I was born. So you can be figuring that out. So we'll continue our Mass now. We'll have our reading. So who's doing our readings first? So, well done. Thanks very much. Off you come. A reading from the book of Eclis Eastis. There is a season for everything, a time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, a time for uprooting what has been planted, a time for killing, a time for healing, a time for knocking down and a time for building, a time for tears, a time for laughter, a time for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones away, a time for gathering them up, a time for embracing and a time to refrain from for embracing, a time for searching, a time for losing, a time for keeping, a time for throwing away, a time for tearing, a time for sewing, a time for keeping silent, a time for speaking, a time for loving, and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. So we love our sad. We sing you a sad. Yep. Thank you. 
second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has, has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord, so that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both to the dead and the living. We shall all have to stand for the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, by my life it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that catch of us, that each of us must give an account of oneself. The, the word of the Lord. So the Lord be with you. So will we stand now for the gospel? A reading from the gospel according to St. Matthew. Then one of the twelve, a man named Judas Iscariot, he went to the chief priests and he said, what are you prepared to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he looked for an opportunity to betray him. The Gospel of the Lord. So we sit again now for a moment. You, you might think that's a kind of a strange gospel for me to read today. But it's Spy Wednesday and it's Holy Week and I, I think it fits in to our Mass today very well. And um, I hope that will become clear as, as I talk along. So again, you're welcome. It's lovely to see so many here remembering Hannah and doing her honour and those lovely words about her and about her kindness and about her goodness. We have our gifts here in front of the altar. Did so, was somebody going to tell us about the gifts? Yes. Okay, will you come up? You see, with the funeral coming in late, we didn't talk about things very much, so um, it's not my fault. <laughs> but it's fine. The photo of Hannah's house represents where she lived happily for 66 years. She, also wa she always welcomed anyone who walked through her door. The Southern Star was weekly read by Hannah and was bought to her by her very good friend Mary. The mixing bowl represents Hannah's love of home baking. She was particularly known for her delicious apple tart. Hannah's mobile phone was never too far from reach. It allowed her to keep in contact with friends and family. Hannah's rosary beads represent her unwavering belief and devotion to God. And finally, Hannah's, Hannah's final letter to Loch Vaughan requested Dan's watch so she could keep it close to her heart until the very end. Well done. And I have over in the house the list that Hannah sent from the nursing home of her dead, her beloved dead, the list of those she wanted to remember in our November Masses. And, you know, just so beautifully written. And, of course, she, you know, um, she wanted everyone to be remembered that she loved. I, 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 I've just jotted down a, a couple of things that I wanted to say. I, I, I wouldn't normally talk about going to somebody on the first Friday because I, I feel it's, 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 it's a very personal thing. But I, I suppose I got to know Hannah through the first Fridays. And I have one particular memory that will stay with me always, you know. Um, 
Dennis or Sheila would, would drive me. I could never find the way up to the house. I've tried and tried it several times on my own. And I, I always ended up coming back down again and missing the turn off up to the house. But anyway, that's another story for another day and it's a boring story. But I, I, I remember the last Christmas Hannah had in her house. And of course, always when we drove into the yard, the door opened. You were welcomed. So I remember going into the house and it was beautiful and warm. And the place was full of Christmas decorations and cards, all arranged beautifully. And it was just there seemed to be a kind of a sparkle around the place and a, an excitement around the place. And I said to her, God, Hannah, your place is lovely. Oh, that's Patsy, she said. Patsy did that. And I suppose that's my, my, my first point. You know, the, the doing and the extra bits, but not the decorations. You know, it meant so much to Hannah. But... She had the candle lit on the table. And I just felt it was like Christmas night, even though it was a few days before it. It was like Christmas night and the lady of the house was waiting for the Lord to come, was waiting for the Holy Family to pass by. And we, we did our prayers and we had our Holy Communion. And I said, you know, Hannah, I think I could stay here forever. And you know what she said to me? You'd be welcome. Couldn't you hear her saying it? You'd be welcome. So I, I thought that was a grace-filled moment for me in, in my life. Um, the welcome for the Holy Communion, the welcome for Jesus, and the help. And of course... You know, um, I, I have to mention Joe today, Joe Crowley, and, and his bringing her to Mass. And sure, you all know that if Joe was out of a Saturday night, well, he'd be bringing her, and he'd be bringing her to Glengariff. So I think Joe owes me all the money that I should have got here when, when Hannah came to Mass, and himself should have been here at Mass. But you know, again, the helping. Hannah couldn't be above in that house on her own without help. And of course, Sheila and all the, the, the journeys out. You could meet them anywhere. And, you know, again, that's what neighbours are for. And I suppose I often met them in the parent, they were either coming or going. And it was always good. And Hannah never was negative about anything, only all praise and all good. So the time of her 90th birthday, I didn't get to the party, but we had mass, and I didn't get to the party, and the next time I went up, she had kept me the last of the cake. So I was trying to give it to Sheila. I said, you know, I don't need that with my diabetes, and I thought, oh no, she, that was for you. She was keeping that for you. And you know what, when I got home, I sat down with a cup of coffee and the cake was lovely. I, she, Hannah told me her, her niece brought it to her. So she was always talking about her nieces and the goodness. She was always talking about the Crowleys and the goodness. She was always talking about her home help and the goodness. And you know, what, what, what more? What more could we say today about this lady who was so grateful for what people did to her, and so grateful for life. So, in, in, in our gospel today, we have the, the awful story of the betrayal of Christ by Judas. How much will you give me if I bring him to you? He said to the chief priest, how much will I give you? How much will you give me? Sorry. And, you know, that there, there was a lovely thought in the magnificent um, little book, Lent, The Lenten Companion. You know, there was a lovely thought today about that. Um, if Judas 
didn't go to the high priest. If he went to Christ and he said to Christ, you know, what about it? What about this? What, 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 what will you give me? Christ would say to him, I give you everything. I give you all my love. I give you the love of God. I, I give you everything. I give you all your heart's desire. And I think that's a lovely thought for today because Christ gave Hannah, despite all the ups and downs of life and despite the loss of her husband so at such, such a long time ago, um, you know, Christ, despite that, she, she, she saw more. And of course, I think her solitude and being on her own helped her in that. So solitude isn't such a bad thing. And you know, I admire all our elderly. And I admire the way they, 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 they look on life and the way they face life. And the way they accept. And no moaning, very little moaning or no moaning. And if moaning is only from the tongue out, it's not from the heart. Because they know more than we know. They've lived more than we have lived. So. Hannah. And again, I, I was seven years going to the, to the nursing home in, 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 over at Dowris. And when I was in Lark in Dowris, in that parish, I was there for seven years and I went to the nursing home all the time. And they were lovely. They were very, very lovely. And especially to somebody who might be dying and, and hadn't anybody. And we mentioned last night, you know, Sister Patrick worked there and you, you can be sure there was loads of prayers. And th there was always prayers. And, you know, Tim and Barbara really made a great job of that. So anyway, I'm going on a bit. But Hannah deserves it. And we'll continue our Mass. And again, herself and, and, and Joe either here in Adrigal or, or, or down in Glengariff and the Holy Mass and you know I, I think I said it when we had James John's funeral and you were all together it's just the same the same gang my, that I said it same crowd same family and I remember saying that I said to the young people you know keep up the faith and I say it to you again today you know, Hannah's faith was the secret of her serenity and her happiness and her love for Jesus and our Blessed Mother. I, I was delighted with the Our Lady of Knock when we, we came into the church. So again, the little things, the little things we can do for each other and the, the things that we take for granted. We're good here in Adrigal at looking out for each other. And let's keep it up. So we're continuing our Mass. I don't know if you have prayers or am I doing the prayers? I can't remember. Have you prayers? I'm doing them. Okay. Thanks very much. So our prayers, our first prayer for Hannah and for Dan and for all belong to them. And the lovely memorial card last night and, and the coffin and, you know, all, all the, the people being remembered with Hannah. And we pray for them all. And, you know, when we have great loss in our lives, when we have somebody young who has died and you know all about it, you know, whenever there's a funeral again in the family, it brings it all back. But don't ever be ashamed to mourn and to miss and to be sad sometimes because that's a great sign of love. So... We pray for Hannah and for all we love in eternal life. We pray for all who are sick, or especially in our nursing homes, in our hospitals, those who are sick at home. And, you know, we, 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 we're praying for little ones who are sick. So we pray for healing, especially for our little ones and our young ones. and for all affected by the COVID. We 
pray for the neighbours and the friends and our home helps and all who helped Hannah. We pray for peace in our place, in our world. And of course, it starts in our own hearts. The peace starts in our own hearts. So we pray for peace in our families and for all our loved ones. So we remember all our dead. I, I suppose our thoughts are very much with the Odonoo family in Castletown, their lovely little girl. You know, you, 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 you just, no answers. So we pray, pray for Karen in eternal life. We pray for her family who, the reality of, of her, her death is hitting them. And of course, we, we thank God for Hannah's long life. And we pray for all our dead. Eternal rest grants them, O Lord. The perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. So we continue with our Mass. So our microphone over here is broken, so that's why I'm kind of operating from the altar. And Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands of me, it would become for us the bread of life. For the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash away our iniquities, cleanse us from our sins. Pray now, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, to Hannah, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation. May, by your loving gift, she may be looked after in eternal life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. So the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He is our salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. And so we pray. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So we'll sit now for this part of the Mass. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, with Francis, our Pope, Ray, our Bishop, and all your people. So we pray for Hannah. She has fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We pray for her and Dan and for all of them and for James John and all who have died now in the last year belong to us and who we're thinking about and mourning. We ask you, Lord, to welcome them into the light of your face. And we pray for ourselves. We ask you that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, the Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you in the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. So we'll stand and we'll pray together. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and help us in our anxieties and worries as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant for peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. So as we pray for peace, and as we can't, we're, we can't offer each other a sign of peace, but we might just close our eyes. And of course, my favourite memory of Hannah is, is the Christmas time and the decorations and the candle and the, the waiting for Christ to come. What's your favourite memory of her? We thank God for a long life and we wish her peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So we'll sit down. So my friends, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy we now who are called into his table. Lord, you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. So may the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Well done, and thanks very much. So very apt for Holy Week. Eternal rest grant unto Hannah, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. And our final prayer of the Mass. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, Hannah may come to the eternal table of Christ. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. So let us bless the Lord. So before our, our final prayers, again, just to thank you for being here, for your attendance, your prayerfulness, um, to thank Mary, our sacristan, and all who have helped in any way. Our lovely music and our lovely singing, your lovely prayers, and Hannah's life. Maybe we'd be able to get a copy of that, would we? It would be able to copy it. I, I notice you use the phone to do it. This, this modern technology, I'm, I'm way behind. So we had our mass for Palm Sunday um, last weekend, and there was a great reaction to it. And I had never known that anything about Facebook or about people coming back and saying that they enjoyed something or that they, they um, look forward to it again. But um, it, so it was a learning curve for me. And we'll have Mass up for you on Holy Saturday night, our Vigil Mass for Easter Sunday. We'll, we'll have our Mass, our blessing of the, the Paschal Candle, our blessing of the Holy Water and our Mass at half seven on Sunday night. But you can watch it at any time, I believe, during the week. So I, I'm leaving all that to, to Declan and to, to Elner. And I, I, I'll just do the Mass, and after that, um, I don't know. I'll be a blank. So our final prayers for Hannah. And I was delighted to see um, her phone being brought up because she was well able to handle the phone and to, she loved hearing from, from people. So my friends, before we go our separate ways, we take leave of our sister. May our, our farewell express our affection for her, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And of course, thanks to Arthur and, and his family for, for their kindness over the last few days. I was saying to Mary at the door, I said the Angelus bell never rang for um, 12 o'clock. It should have rang when he, he arrived, but um, anyway, we'll, that's another job for Declan or for Dara or for whoever can fix it for us or Fergus. Merciful Lord, turn towards us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to our sister, 
and help all who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we meet in Christ and we are with Hannah forever and ever. Amen. So I'll just go in and put on my coat and we'll take Hannah up to her place of rest. <laughs>